Oh, hey, what's up? Yeah, it's been a minute, right? Um, happy anniversary. Well, um, to the JP players, we're actually just kind of riding along on their anniversary, but I like riding and I like uh, getting lots of rewards. It's always very, very fun. So um, I'm all down for this. Uh, yeah, it's been a second. Um, we have welcomed in a bunch of amazing units that I would have loved to talk about. Um, big favorites of mine, but, ah, uh, man, I was busy with things and good things, bad things, all the things, and it's really, really crappy that the weekend that I can come talk about, uh, this game with y'all is, like, when Melnia comes out, like, gross, ugh, so, um, I had to, I had to, uh, get myself a nice little glass of bourbon here for this one, um, because there's just no way that I can talk about Melnia with, like, my, my happy little vodka cocktail, so, nope, um, got my Weller's Special Reserve, it's a Kentucky bourbon, And apparently it's super hard to find, but I don't know, I just found a 1.75 liter at my local liquor store, so um, that is what I am enjoying right now. And there's some ice in there, if you can hear it, nah, barely, um, but mostly because it's proof of life, um, it's my signature sound that allows you to know that I am alive and well. So yes, I am those, 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 both of those things. Um, but I wasn't always well. In fact, one of the first couple weeks that I had to refrain from discussing some, some awesome units was the stupid, like, two-week or, like, two-and-a-half. It was, like, some bizarrely long, awful amount of time where I was, like, smacked up the head with COVID. And, like, I had heard before about this whole thing. Like, oh, yeah, you know, you might lose your sense of taste and smell. And, like, that's terrible. And it's like, okay, well, you know, I've had a cold before. I've lost, you know, that to an extent, right? Like, okay. But no, man, I lost it completely. And, like, it made me feel like I wasn't even alive anymore on a biological level. And it also threatened my, like survivability on a biological level it was it was very very freaky I don't recommend it um but like going out like walking out the door into nature and realizing that nature smells like a lot of things but when you can't smell anything you feel like any monster well not monster but like something in nature might creep up on you at any time um and that was a freaky freaky feeling um I really did miss eating food and the way it tasted, it made me not want to eat anything at all. Like, what's the point? And I realized, yeah, like, I am all about, like, I I live to eat. I don't eat to live, that kind of a thing. Um, so, yeah, that was that was a wretched time. Um, so don't don't let that happen to you if you can help it. But it was, it man, it messed with me. Um, and then, oh, I had an awesome work retreat, which... <laughs> I don't know if you got a work retreat when half the people there are your siblings, but um, it was, it was, you know, you know, it was, it was, it was very professional, um, and also a lot of fun and very nice. So I was, I was out doing that. Um, oh, and then really, sorry, but like, not, well, I'm not gonna apologize for this, but every little bit of time that I had free, I've been filling up with Baldur's Gate three. three. Um, I guess I should give it a number, but finally beat that. Um, me and, uh, me and Sly have been working on that for, man, I guess, yeah, a few months since it came out in September on PS5 and finally, finally beat it. So now I feel like I can re-enter the world and do other things. Um, so cheers to that. Uh, do you want to see my character? This is my character. Yeah, her name's Adora, deal with it. And she's a druid, deal with that. Um, but real fun to play druid in, in Baldur's Gate because of um, the like the animals switcherooing, getting into little tatless spaces. Of course, I was always a cat. I was never a spider, gross. Why would I ever be a spider? Ugh. Um, and also she has some, you know, access to some amazing like AOE skills, um, AOE spells, sorry. So, and that's my jam, anyway. Um, so I had a lot of fun doing that, but finally beat that. Now I'm going on a second playthrough, but like don't have to feel like I have to be 
you know, <laughs> you know, when you get that like feeling about a game <laughs> where like every waking moment has to go into it. So now I can chill and we can go back and we can talk about War of the Visions. Um, anyhow, this has probably been the stupidest, longest intro um, that, that ever existed. So let's go talk about the idiot in question. I hate talking about baddies, man. They're just meh. Really, really do nothing for me, especially this one. Like, lacks motivation. Just motivation, I guess, is just like, I like to kill things and be evil. But, you know, unless we get anything more out of that, like at least Sadly's story, spoiler alert, you know, you kind of, okay, like this is where he's coming from. He's got this little backstory thing or whatever. Hers is just like, I like to be mean to be mean or something. I don't know. I mean, Renelle just likes to follow her if she's obsessed with her or something. It's just, I don't know. Would like a little bit more there if they want me to care about this merciless lone gunner, Melnia. Let's go see what she's about, if she's about anything. Well, uh, with Renelle by her side, she has traversed numerous kingdoms in order to claim Jaden's life. What a goal. Isn't that what everyone wanted? To take Jaden's head? Nothing new. Uh, yeah, see, you're totally unoriginal, Melnia, from the get-go. However, with the conclusion of the War of the Gal Highlands, the target of her clandestine activities has changed. Now she seeks the Six Swords. The key is to locating the Mornblade. Why? We do not know. Why does she have any knowledge of this? We also do not know. But the true purpose of her presence remains shrouded in mystery, I guess. Um, that's what I was coming to say. Um, or I already said, it's shrouded in mystery, we don't know what her motivations are, so unless they have a really cool backstory planned, she's just pretty lame, um, in my estimation. Her limit burst is the Toxic Vice, it will destroy any barrier that reduces physical damage on a target while dealing large damage and a chance of inflicting poison for three turns, and an additional effect significantly lowering man eater while poison is in effect and that's a very large diamond there um now let's not discount how annoying poison is because now that soul has hit and by the way soul dude soul is my man um i really love that character but i'll maybe mention that later um poison is really annoying like it can be really annoying and like We've seen that, like, now that Sol has hit his little AoE poison thing, like, it can be kind of devastating and silly. It's like, wait, what the heck? Like, I'm getting destroyed by poison? This is stupid, but it, it happens. Um, and you can't feel that bad about it either. You can't feel that bad because um, it is devastating. So um, she can do this, but this is not AoE. This is just going to be single target. Um, and let's see what else she has. Um, a main job, the Middle Guard Striker class. Uh, Simulcra. Sim, uh, a job that can employ attacks from a distance and bring enemies down efficiently by using abilities that reduce healing power, damage two enemies while inflicting sleep, remove re-rays, and more. Sounds like a pain. Uh, Ranger, Middle Guard Striker class, bow wielding job that attacks from a distance, range increases from high vantage points. And then she's also got Trick Lancer, which is a Vanguard Striker class, a spear wielding job adept at mid range fighting with its two panel piercing attacks and an ability that reduces enemy AP on critical hit. So um, that's what she's all about. Her TMR will be the Imperial Diadem. Um, looks like a, a nice little circlet kind of a thing, an accessory. It's a special headdress fashioned using an unknown technology. Well, don't get weird on this game. That makes us think she's from the future or the past or something bizarre. Melnia was wearing it when she first arrived in Ardra, but its origins are known to none. It has the ability to calm the mind and sharpen focus at all times, not just in battle. And the intense focus that it bestows enables the wearer to see a few seconds into the future. Hmm. Or so it is claimed. However, no ordinary person can use it, for it causes immense mental strain, and over time can even lead to the collapse of the mind. Oh, that's interesting. It kind of makes you wonder if Renelle was originally wearing it, because, man, that girl looks pretty worse for wear. Um, and maybe not. Maybe it was just Melnia from the start, but this kind of gives us a little interesting background on who these gals might be and maybe where they came from. And, yeah, I mean, like, spoiler alert, 
there was this whole like alternate timeline thing going on with uh, with Gilgamesh trying to kind of build and create this like perfect timeline that will um, abet his goals to just to defeat the realm, realm scourge and get back to where him and Amnilus um, are going. Um, but uh, this maybe um, implies that either Melnia is mm, working against their goals or working against defeating the Realm Scourge, or maybe she wants it as well, but for different reasons. Um, we're not sure if she's acting on her own or she's acting in the place of somebody else, so it does open up some possibilities. There might be at least some uh, more interesting things in her story besides just like, I'm bad and I like to be bad and bad is cool, because that's kind of the impression I'm getting from her right now, it's just kind of annoying. All right, suppressive targeting uh, will be the um, ability on her TMR. It will significantly raise her own, or whoever's wearing it, their own missile attack and raise reaction block rate for three turns. Um, it's got, you know, some HP and a tech stat on it, accuracy, agility, and crit. Of course, you can amplify those with trust stones if you're really cool like I am. Um... Yeah, so that's what she's about, but you know, am I am I sold on her? Dude, I'm not. Cool to pull. No, you're not. Stop stepping on me. What the heck? Um go step on I don't know, go step on Rennell's face or something. Get out of here. Um yeah. Now yeah, Melania, not cool to pull, not cool to pull at all. Um <sighs> course you're gonna do what you want did i ever say don't do what you want no i've never said that i've always said go do what you want but uh you know do you want to know if i think she's cool no i don't so now you know go make your own decision right Ugh. um who is cool to pull i'll tell you who's cool to pull oh sorry everything's messed up because i don't usually play um on my on, my, uh, on this device but i had to do this for you um look who's cool to pull yeah of course, Soul is cool to pull. Um, ah, I really, really loved his story in, um, in FFBE. Heliarch's story broke my heart. Actually broke my heart. Um, he was so good. He had, he was just like, he's so noble. All this integrity. And then freaking Eclipsa, man. I don't know how long you followed me, but if you know... Or if you have, then you know how much I hate Eclipsa. She makes me wanna, I don't know, do things. And she's really annoying, and I don't like her at all. So, she always makes me really mad. And so, that whole story event was, ugh, drove me crazy, but I also had so much love for Heliarch. And then in season two in FFE, like where we see Soul kind of like take the journey and like have to end up kind of like grouping along and like going along with Laswell as they're all trying to find Rain. And it, you know, he's like super crotchety and curmudgeon-y. And then it's like sense of humor comes out and, you know, da -da 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 -da. I won't give, you know, well, it's not like I'm giving it whatever. Um, but by the end, man, I was in tears. I gotta say the end, him, Dark Fina, man. I, yeah, I cried. I cried at my mobile game. Tears uh, drip dropping onto uh, my phone screen. Don't worry, I was in like my bedroom hiding and I had all the lights out. So um, it was perfectly respectable. But um, yeah, I, I was super down, super down for his story. And of course, of course I wanted him. And there he is, um, all, all built up and, and things. Let's go. Oh, this is not where it's going to be. Let's go just read his little thing. Yeah, stop it. Get out of here. <clears throat> Sorry. Where's the story? Uh, eh? No. Oh, there it is. Alright. Uh, Moon of Armageddon Soul. Relation FFBE. Mm. One of Hess's eight sages who was sealed in a certain land. During that time, he was tainted by the evil wills of humans, causing him to hate all forms of life and grow convinced that death is the only solution. He says that Rain's hypocrisy burns brighter than the sun, while he is the truth illuminating moon. Um, okay, so that really didn't get into all the things that I was talking about. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more there. So yeah, I mean, I would have told you he was cool to pull. That's the advice I would have given you. 
couple weeks ago when you could have pulled for him, but now you can't, so sucks for you if you didn't get him, so sorry about that. Um, uh, what else? Oh, Gurn's back, man. I would have pulled for Gurn's back, too. Oh, I did pull for Gurn's back, but um, I wanted him because at the LA Fan Festa event, uh, I was in the Six Fangs. That was my group, so that's why it was personal to me. And I just think that Gernsback is a really cool character. Anyhow, uh, I just feel like that poor guy is shouldering so much um, to have to, like, you know, escort crazy eyes around constantly. Um, man, he probably has to even, like, do his perm for him. Um, ugh, sorry, I'm spilling things. Uh, and, and yeah, uh, Gernsback. Gernsback put, puts up with a lot, so yes, he was cool to pull. Griffin, man, Griffin is so cool to pull. I really, really want him, and I'm so mad because I had a friend visiting. Oh, that's the other thing I was doing. I had a friend visiting for like a week, and uh, t totally missed the boat uh, to pull Gerns back, which I meant to do, and uh, really wanted that guy because yeah, that guy, he yeah, he's cool. He's down to drink and, and philosophize and then like also just like beat on people that need to get beaten on and, and you know save the day when it needs to happen so he was really cool I would have said he was cool to pull too so those are three people that were definitely cool to pull oh Aliyah Aliyah the um the fisty bride um she would have been she would have been a cool cool to pull unit as well so if you missed out on those I mean that's kind of on you because I mean they're obviously cool if you um missed out on them and now you're pulling from Melnia and I don't know, maybe we need to talk about things. But, um, well, we don't have to talk about them. Um, you can talk to yourself about them, actually. Um, but, um, I don't know, this is probably enough, right? Yeah, that's enough to get us started on our, on our um, I don't know, um, continued conversation about War of the Visions. Yeah, I think it's probably good. Um, yeah, well... Um, cheers, I guess, if you're going for, uh, Melania. Oh, and if you got anything good in that 100 pull, cheers to that. I keep waiting to get some good stuff. Um, good stuffs, hopefully. Plural. But, um, cheers to you if you got some good stuff. And, I guess, cheers if you're going for Melania. I forgot Melania. Yay. Um, yeah, cheers. Um, uh, and... What do we have coming up next? I don't know. Um, it's kind of cool only being a month behind JP because it's kind of like, feels like anything can happen at any time. Um, anyway. So, um, okay. This is the time when I have to learn, relearn how to say my awkward goodbyes and, um, tell y'all, uh, cheers.